Westbrook at 119, Keelan Cole at 151. I think I'm buying more Keelan Cole than Westbrook just because he's cheaper. Yeah. I like the explosive nature of what Keelan Cole did throughout the season last year and came out of nowhere. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not upset with taking Westbrook at 119 either. Like, I like what I saw from him. He did nothing but perform. Yeah, and I think I think that the the one fifteen for Marquise Lee is terribly disrespectful and, and way out of out of line. But I think one nineteen for Didi is about about on par. I think that's probably right. fair a fair place to have to spend to get this dude because this, this was a rookie coming off an injury. Oh my and gosh! Came back yeah. in and, and when he came back in, he he picked up where he left off in the preseason. Yeah, I mean he missed ten weeks. He missed ten weeks with a core injury and comes in. And just like you said, picked right back up where he was, and and he he's just so he's super intriguing to me. He uh, you know he's fast, you know he's a burner, but he just he has this uncanny ability to separate at the very end of a route, right before the ball gets there. And he's he's got super late hands, so he he disguises it well. Like when the ball's coming, he'll lay out, he'll lay it all out on the line. I mean, he'll crush a crossing route. I really I really enjoyed. How they started to use him when he did come back from from that core injury, um, you know. I mean, he crushed it in the preseason, but that's against you know second, third, fourth stringers. That's not who he's playing when he comes back in in week ten or yeah week week eleven and, and starts playing really well. I mean, making plays down the field in the short game against the sideline. He's a gamer, and I think I, I think I got to be in at one nineteen. I mean, I mean, I'll, let me get some DD. Yeah, I mean to, to be to be you know the young guy that had some draft capital. He was the best wide receiver in college two years ago, so they said he won the award. Uh, and he comes out like you said, Jay Wayne missed all those games. Heisman finalist. Yeah, made it to New York. Comes out first game as a pro off the injury, three for thirty five. That's not terrible, but it's not fantastic. Six for forty one, six for seventy eight, five for eighty one in a touch. I mean, and that's against. He was doing what Marquise Lee was supposed to be doing in this offense across from Allen exactly, Robinson. Exactly, right. exactly, exactly. And six for 41 was against Arizona, and five for 81 in a touch was against Seattle. And, I mean, it just... Another thing to be said for Didi is the reason why he slipped to the fourth round in the draft is because he had some off-the-field concerns. concerns. He had some baby mama drama. There was some domestic allegations. There were never really any charges or... Allegedly. Any, right. Allegedly. But I mean, there was a, there was it was over and over. It happened a few times. But for you know, for Tom Coughlin to come in here, take a chance on this dude, get him in the fourth round. He made it a whole season. You didn't hear anything negative about him. There was never any distractions. He he when he got his when he got healthy, he got his chance. And then they started to pepper him with some targets here and there, and it looked awesome. And so like the, he was behind the eight ball all the way to get into the where he got. And now he's he's shown you some flashes on the field that look really good for a guy who's just he's not he's 180 pounds soaking wet or something right like he's just not that big of a dude but his play is so much bigger than that. It's good points. He's got that lethal points. ability, but he's got the short game working too. And I sure. just I like the scheme of him. So many plays they were putting him in motion behind the line of scrimmage. Like you gotta that just sets the defense on edge. You know they're about to hit you in the face with Leonard Fournette, but Mark with, with this dude motion in and he's so fast and quick you get it just it just all works together and yeah. i really like it going forward i don't love blake bortles but this is dynasty and i'm in on some dd westbrook i like it i like it i mean i, I can't argue with you i'm i'm strictly going on the numbers game here and i like what keelan cole like was keelan doing cole stretching the field last year and and his athletic ability i have no hatred for westbrook in my heart so i don't even need to let it out <laughs> but i liked what keelan cole came and was doing out of Kentucky Wesleyan or wherever the hell he came from and just lit it up and was was a fantastic prospect and at 151 I mean I don't think you're selling Keelan Cole if you bought him last year I think you got to ride this out and and I, and I love the way that they were using him down the field and and he just seemed to be a, a, a playmaker and and in college he was like one every like five catches was a touchdown for this guy yeah just an electric player and uh, I, I think the future is bright for for the Jaguars' offense if they can figure out how to uh, strike downfield efficiently. Maybe Blake Bortles carries this offseason confidence into a, a whole season of the best of Blake Bortles that we've ever seen. I, I don't know. But it, regardless, they don't necessarily need Blake Bortles to crush it to, no, to win mean, games because Keelan, they built Keelan, this defense in this running game. So Westbrook, Keelan Cole, and Lee were fairly well supported by Blake Bortles as much as we love to hate on him, it's true. like he prop, you know, I don't know if they propped him up or he propped them up, 
either yeah. way. I mean, four out of the five games in the season, Keelan Cole was startable. A couple games in a row, uh, Westbrook was startable. Marquise Lee was in one of my lineups pretty much all year long. And we're talking yeah. about w- rookie wide receivers here, so they don't even like need to be startable in their rookie season for me to see enough to like want to be in on the future of, of what yeah, they could and it, be. This is just going to be an obviously very interesting team next year. You got a team that came out of nowhere, made it to the AFC Championship game, was up by 10 in the fourth quarter. They mm. could they could just fold up shop, or they could just continue to yeah. ride that wave of hey, it was us against the world. We had them, we had them, we couldn't, we had you know, yeah. let them off the hook. Let them off the hook. We can let's let's It'll double be, back. That's a good point. It'll if, be interesting to see how a team who came out of nowhere and like every year they were supposed to take a step forward, and this year they took a giant step forward. Giant. And now now they have a little bit of a target on their back of being the the big bad mean jaguars on sure. defense and and smash mouth football and a couple of electric players on the outside to stretch the field so that's a good point out like and that. and and complimentary back up here if you bring in out alan robinson what does that do for these guys you know because if you i don't think you're bringing back alan robinson and not giving him a ton of targets so, but if you bring in Allen Robinson and Marquis Lee goes away and his targets are gone, it just be Alan Hearns maybe goes away as well. Right. It, it'll it'll be an interesting it'll be an interesting team, but it also be an interesting offense because they they I think they're going to lean on what got them, like you said, Jay Wayne about Westbrook. I think the Jaguars going to lean on what got them to where they got to, which was a good run game, play action. Let let uh let your boy run around. Let let um Bortles pick up a first down with his legs. Don't turn it over, kind of thing. Um, but with Westbrook is dynamite. Keelan Cole's dynamite. Downfield A-Rob stretcher. Is dynamite. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's so muddy if he's there for real. It's going to be muddy, but it's also there's they're all young. I mean, yeah, Allen Robinson young. is still young, so they're all real young. And what happens if they were to bring in another quarterback next year? And you know, or draft one this year, right? Because that, they could get out of out from under Bortles next year if they wanted to. The right. Way the they, deal if is they, if they, they could bring in somebody who's a little bit more prolific passing, right? And just transfer this thing over. Right now, right now, Coughlin's got it set up the way he wants because he's working with what he had. Yeah. You don't just grab a quarterback out of thin air unless you're the 49ers and you get Jimmy G for a second rounder. Oh, you know, oh it doesn't gosh. happen every day. Speaking yeah. of the 49ers, yeah. Speaking of, let's get into a little. Oh, no. We're gonna we're gonna break it here. Is that yeah. what we're gonna oh, do? Well, I gave you the break symbol yeah. before you ever started this. Is that so. what that, I'm not. I don't have a PhD in sign language, Jason. Yo, I'm literally like, <laughs> break. We're going for a break. All right, it's a hard break. <laughs> oh, it was hard. All right. 